Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'll talk about the Musical Paradise D1. This is a deck that Gary sent me. And uh, the reason why I decided to review it is because when I finished reviewing the Sprout 100 Diota VX as well as the Atel IN30, those are budget integrated amps, my viewers reached out to me asking if I can review a few budget decks. Now I've owned maybe 10 decks in my life. I've owned a few uh, entry-level decks and a few high-end decks. So for me to review an entry-level deck, um, I like it to be interesting. And this is definitely very interesting because it uses tube. So just like my other reviews, I try to involve my other audiophile friends. Now this time I got more people involved because right now I'm gonna talk about a $450 to $500 US DAC. And I wanted to be sure that this is a good deck to recommend. So I let 10 audiophiles listen to it. And uh, so if you look at my poke audio video recently, the uh, LSIM 707, I've introduced, I think, four or five audio files. And uh, this time, on top of Mr. Turntable, Mr. Focal, Mr. Uh, Multisystem, Mr. Guitarist, Mr. Quad, and Mr. DIY, and that's six. Uh, I've involved Mr. Vintage, because he owns a lot of vintage system. Now, he used to play with very high-end gear, and uh, eventually he went back to playing vintage gear. Uh, I've also involved Mr. JBL, because he owns a very nice uh, JBL system, and I'll be making a video on it eventually. And finally, another friend of mine, I'll call him Mr. Uh, LSIM 707, oh, 707, because he was the one that introduced me to the 707. I involve people who own very high-end DAX and also very entry-level DAX, so that I get a difference in opinion as to where this rank. So looking at the DAC, you have uh, two tubes here. And the reason why they're recessed inside is because I changed the tubes to 6922. Uh, it came with uh, a different tube. I forgot what the model is, the original tubes. I just changed it right away and I put some 6922 in. And with this deck, if you look at the back, you have uh, fixed output and variable output. So what it means is that you can use it as a preamp if you wanted to. So all you need is a power amp to go with it and you are done. Now, you can't use it as a real preamp because it doesn't have input, right? So if you have a turntable, you can't use it with this. But for somebody who doesn't have a turntable and you know you just happen to have a power amp lying around, you can actually just buy this and with the power amp, you're actually done. If you compare this to, let's say, having a real tube preamp, there is a difference. Uh, sure, these, because it has tube, do expand the sound stage. Um, it's not the same as having a real tube preamp. Not that it's not holographic, but it is not at the same level as, let's say, you use a shit Freya. See, since I, I'm talking about shit Freya, I might as well talk about this right now. If you look at uh, tube gear, um, there is what I call the modern sound and the older sound. Modern sound, like uh, Audio Research LS28, it has air but it doesn't have that tubish sound, just like the uh, Prima Luna Evo 400 that I listened to recently. Uh, we even try to bring tubes <laughs> over trying to get that tubish sound out of it. No, it doesn't work like that. The newer tube gears are more about speed, clarity, and so forth. Now, these, this DAC though has tubish sound, but it's not really old sounding because it's still holographic, it's still decently fast and uh, it's very clear. So it's somewhere in between, but I would say uh, this is more towards the older type of tube sound, yet you have uh, a lot of modern touch to it. And so continue on, if you look at the back, you see that there's a coax in, there's USB in, and there is Bluetooth. Wow, this is quite modern, isn't it? Mo Bluetooth. Um, I used, I tried a Bluetooth, it's, it's Bluetooth, I'll put it that way you're better off using coaxial input and USB input. The caviar, I'm gonna mention it right away actually, right off the bat, is the USB drivers. Now, uh, in the beginning, when I had it plugged to my regular computer that I use here behind, it's actually a very slow computer. I know it's a quad, but it was in the Pentium era, before the i3, i5 era. And uh, what I noticed is that I keep hearing pop sound. 
So I had to change to my other computer, which is an i5 core, and then it works perfectly. So make sure if you're gonna use it with USB that your computer is at least somewhat modern. And this is not only unique to uh, Musical Paradise, the uh, 4, 3 or 4, 3 uh, Macintosh that I had that has a built-in DAC, or which is actually a DAC itself, has the same problem. The, the, the USB drivers, man, you need like a, a pretty strong computer to run it without crashing your system actually. So looking at the front, you have the volume knob, you have the LEDs for the power, the USB, Bluetooth coaxial and variable output. You have a headphone jack and you have no remote. Uh, it doesn't bother me because I use it as a DAC. I don't use it as a preamp, but for those of you who use it as a preamp, well, you know, unfortunately you have to get up if you need to change the volume. Uh, the construction is pretty cool. I mean, it feels very solid, it's heavy. And what's very unique about it, if I open it up, you're gonna see two Toroidal transformers. One is for apparently the digital side and one for the analog side. So usually, you know, the way I, at least for me, when I look at a gear, I, the power supply is the most important for me. And as you can see, this has an uh, incredible power supply for this price. Even not for this price, it's still an incredible power supply because even with higher end DACs, you don't necessarily see two Toroidal transformers in it. So therefore I had high hopes for this DAC when I first got it. All right, so then let's talk about how it sounds. Now, given the fact that it has tubes, and as I mentioned before, it has that tubish sound, you'll notice that the top end is not rolled off, but round off. And this is very important because I hate it when gears are rolled off. That's like going to the treble and just turning it down. So yes, it's smooth, but you're gonna lose all the details. This doesn't do that it rounds off the edges so it is not harsh or sharp and for a lot of people it's fantastic and the mid-range next is warm so it is a bit colored uh, so it's not a neutral sounding DAC but I found uh, when I switched from uh, some of my own DAC to this DAC uh, the vocals are more rich and uh, those DAC that I switched from are like full grand so there is advantage to it. I know it can be a little bit colored, but I like it myself. And uh, the base uh, depends now. Okay. So I, when I brought it to my friend's place, when I compared it to the more budget uh, DAX, the base, relatively speaking, is strong, stronger. But when I uh, compare it to a higher end DAC, the base control is not as good. So it is all relative. So I would say that the base control compared to my high-end DAC is not as tight, um, but compared to a budget DAC, like a budget as in $400 DAC, uh, it is more, it's stronger. At least the DAC that I was able to compare to was about 400-ish, it was made in France. So in short, um, I would say that this has that tubish sound. Uh, it's not bright, it's not harsh. Uh, so for the pe for those of you who want that extreme detail, extreme sharpness, uh, then this might still do it for you because it's very detailed. Um, but if you like that, you know, because I noticed that in budget gear where they really push up the, 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 the treble and the clarity, if that's what you're looking for in a DAC, then I won't say, I, I would say that this is not for you. And for those of you who want absolute neutrality, you don't want the warmth in your vocals, then this is also not for you. But for those of you who want a musical DAC, uh, then this is absolutely for you. So putting aside how it sounds, is it good? That's the question I have. When I, every equipment that I buy, there is such a thing called the deal breaker for me. It must at least meet a certain criteria for me to consider it uh, good for me. For example, if I shot, shot for a power amp, what I look for in a power amp is that it has to be smooth. So if your if the power amp is not smooth, I don't care if it excels in imaging, it excels in uh, bass control, it excels in uh, dynamics, I don't care. If the amp is not smooth, I already just bar it off. Now that does not mean that, you know, everyone likes amps that are smooth. Some people like a bit of grit to the sound. So that is why it's only unique to me. 
when I buy a, a tube preamp, I want it to be holographic. And that for me is the deal breaker. If, it do, if it's not holographic, if it's not three dimensional, then that tube preamp is not for me. So when it comes to DAC, for me, the deal breaker is, is it analog sounding or not? I know it sounds kind of weird. It is a DAC, right? Digital to analog converter. I would say most sub $1,000 DAC that I've listened to are not analog sounding. Okay, um, there's always this digital glare that bothers me when I listen to those uh, DAC. So how can I explain it? I guess it's a bit dry. Um, it's not refined. Um, it's not as smooth. It feels like, you know, as I mentioned, they're trying to, to chase after that brightness, that clarity. Because as, when I first started as a newbie, I liked that. I want to hear the clarity, but I noticed that once I move up to the higher end DAX, it's more fluid, uh, it's more organic, and um, it's in short more analog sounding. Of course, it's not going to be like a turntable, but it, you can tell the second when you swap between those DAX, that one is more analog sounding. Now, what is very unique about this DAC, it is analog sounding. So in actual use, um, there is no such thing as the best DAC, right? It all comes down to uh, synergy. So there are times where I would prefer this DAC over my more expensive DAC. So for example, uh, when I was playing with the LSIM Polk Audio 707, uh, at one point I had it plugged to the Class A 2200i. Now this is an integrated M. It has everything built in. And you're looking about five, six grand, this uh, integrated amp. So you expect the DAC to be very good and it is very good. Uh, but when I was listening to uh, the Pope audios with Mr. Kanta, we noticed that by putting in the musical paradise, it sounded better. There was more richness to the, t uh, to the sound, the, there's more weight to the guitar strings. So uh, it, it's warmer because that combination with the Class A was a little bit lean and cold. So uh, by adding a DAC, it made a difference. And uh, I also brought it over to my uh, friend, Mr. Vintage. And uh, before I went over, I told him, all right, uh, bring out your best transport that you have hidden somewhere that you'd never use. So he took out this nice Krell transport. So I'm gonna sidetrack a little bit for fun, okay? Because this transport is so cool. Uh, it's from the 90s. At the time, it was probably six grand. So it was at the time it was the price of a Toyota Tercel. You're looking at a car here now, and this is just a transport. Uh, he never uses it. He uses ten dollar CD players, and he thinks that is uh, is as good. Um, well, not as good. Um, let's just say that uh, he feels that when he matches his equipment very well, a ten dollar CD can give his ten thousand dollar whatever setup a uh, run for his money anyway one day uh, i guess i'll make a video talking about it because it's actually a lot of fun okay so now let's get back to this so he had the crowd hook up to a classy DAC, and he told me probably at the time it cost him about 10 grand it's in the 90s right so you're looking at what 20 30 grand today's money so while we're at it so let me show you how this uh C cd transport looks like so before he let me listen to this setup he let me listen to a ten dollar cd player just by the switch from this ten dollar cd player to the ultra high-end one uh yeah i can feel the difference in smoothness for him the ten dollar one is not worse than the ten thousand dollar one because he wanted a bit of grit he doesn't want it to be too smooth so from his point of view the ten dollar dollar cd player is as enjoyable as the ten thousand dollar well probably twenty thirty thousand today's money a CD player in his specific setup and uh, with uh, specific songs that we played. Now, when I put in the Musical Paradise DAC in, and I swap out the Class A, what I notice is that it's not as smooth as the Class A, but it has more grit. So it's in between the $10 CD-ROM and the Class A DAC, somewhere in between. And uh, it's enjoyable too, because you don't want it to be too smooth sometimes. And the first thing my uh, Mr. Vintage said was, wow, this sounds analog. It's really good. So I'll, I'll just uh, shorten it. I let nine audio files listen to it. And all of them said it was very good. Actually, 10. I remember now. There was one more. Um, Mr. Rido's D1. Okay, I'll call him that from now on. Anyway, so I had 10 audio files listen on top of me, 11. And uh, all of them sort of find that it's very good.
Some of them would guess that this is a thousand dollars. Some of them were laughing when I told them the price. And uh, some of them wants to buy it for themselves. And that includes me too. At this price, I'll buy one as a spare so I can use it to test against other decks. Uh, I brought this deck to three places. Uh, the rest, I invite them to come to my home to listen. So, all right guys, think about it. Why am I doing this? Why am I bringing this to different places to test it and, le and let my friend also evaluate it? If you think about it, I'm not getting paid for this, right? In fact, I have to pay to do this. I have to pay the gas for it, not let alone my time. Sometimes the drives are hours. Sometimes I'll drop it off and I'll go pick up a week after. So I do this because I enjoy it. Right. And I also do it because I want to be sure as a YouTube reviewer, what pains me the most is when I uh, recommend something, somebody buys it based on my recommendation and it's not for them. And the reality, it's going to happen right out of 10 people, seven of seven people might like it, but three people might not like it. And, you know, because we all have different tastes. So I do it because, you know, it's for the peace of heart and also uh, for confidence. You know, I am confident that this is good because I took the time to test it at a different environment, different system, get different input for it. And I can see that in the comment section, many of you really appreciate the work I put into it. So um, what I do like wish though, is that uh, for those of you who have not subscribed, do subscribe because I want to get access to more gear. But, you know, companies look at your subscriber count. So, you know, if you're not subscribed and you've been watching my video for a while, please do consider subscribing. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up at this point. So one thing I really enjoy through my journey is to find gems. Uh, these little companies that built these fantastic gear that nobody knows about. And uh, so and they don't know how to price it correctly and you get them for so cheap and yet they perform exceptionally well. So I enjoy reviewing stuff like that because I know that when I recommend it, it is absolutely for sure good value, good performance for the money. All right, you have to be realistic. This is not a $4,000 DAC. When I switch between my high-end DAC with it, I can tell, yes, there's a difference, right? Dynamics, smoothness, control. I do hear it, okay? But... I guess I'll finish uh, with a story then. How's that? Okay. So recently I went over to my friend's place to listen to his Rido D1. Uh, we were doing A-B tests against many high-end uh, systems right now. So maybe I'll make a video on that too. So we're comparing the Yamaha AS3000, the uh, Prima Luna Evo 400, and, the, and my own Audio Research Plus Classic Combo. So as I walked in, I heard the Yamaha AS3000, it was fantastic. And then uh, we started doing A-B tests with different uh, systems. And we start, then once you start doing A-B tests, you start criticizing things, right? Oh, the bass is not as fast on this one. The bass is not as well controlled on that one and so forth. At the end of the whole test, you know, we start you know, summarizing this is better at this, that is better at that. But as I sit back and I look at all the system, I go like, you know what? They're all fantastic. They all sound great. It's just that when we have something to compare to, we start nitpicking them. So that is why when I show this DAC to my friends, what I do is that I put my high-end DAC first, and then I swap right away to the budget DAC. The key here is that they go like, oh, that's actually very good. Instead of, Thomas, shut that thing off. You know, just, just put it away. Because... It is good enough that uh, it, it is enjoyable for them, okay? If you start really criticizing and nitpicking the little details, yes, there is a difference. But just like that, if you're listening to it overall without, you know, nitpicking, it's good. It's good enough for them, for everybody to go like, yeah, this sounds pretty good. And that for me is what's important. And you know, in, our, in our journey of searching for high-end gears and better gears and stuff like that, sometimes I think like we nitpick on the little things so much that we forgot to look at the forest, right? We just look at the tree instead. So that's why I did, uh, for, that's why for me, my test with my friends is just that. Swapping from a high-end to this, does give them that shock right away. Oh, Thomas shut it off. And none of them did that. And all of them said that this sounds great. So uh, with that, I'll see you next time.